Hey, b &H viewers, welcome to our Skype call with Canon. I've got Paul and Ryan, and they've got two exciting, very cool, unique products uh, coming from Canon. New camera, it is the oh. Canon C300 Mark III. Oh my Here we goodness. go. And he has it, it. holding it. I have it. Can you believe it? I'm really excited about this because I've been waiting actually for years and years and years for Canon to make this camera. Honestly, mm. I've always been a big fan of the C300. Um, I love repping the C300 line, but this is really the apotheosis of the C300 line right here. So why don't you tell me about the most exciting feature of the C300 Mark III? It's got to be this, this new sensor. Yeah, definitely for me it is. So this new dual gain output sensor, it's a super 35 millimeter CMOS 4K sensor. Basically, the whole idea behind it was they expanded the dynamic, dynamic range. So now we have over 16 stops of total dynamic range. It's really interesting about how they go about it. Can you explain it a little bit? The engineers went back and they're utilizing the same technology that the dual pixel autofocus is using. Uh -oh. So if you, if you know that, each pixel on the Canon sensors is split into two diodes. Sure. Right? And each of those diodes is recording the exact same in information at the same time. So what's happening here, though, is that the engineers realized that one of those diodes could be recording a lower gain, lower noise image, while the other diode at the same time is recording a higher gain, but a higher saturation image. Uh -huh. And so when the sensor dumps all of its information out, those images combine to form one frame, and you get the combination of the lower noise and the higher sensitivity. And uh -huh. hence, you have more dynamic range. What a cool way to get you more dynamic range is to take a technology you've always been using and then reapply it to a different feature that's that's really cool that's yeah exciting. it's really interesting and when you when you look in an image from it and you you look into the shadows and if, if you're intimate with uh you know canon log images and mm -hmm. shooting with uh, c300 and stuff like that you'll know that canon log originally was it was hard it's hard to deal with a little bit there's a little bit of noise there in the shadows sure this is like night and day i've 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 been looking at a lot of canon canon imagery and this is like nothing I've ever seen in the shadows from a Canon camera. So it's really, really exciting. Another point about the uh, uh, dual gain output is that there is no temporal distortion because that image is being captured simultaneously by the two different uh, uh, prioritization amplifiers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're calling them uh, saturation prioritizing amplifier and lower noise noise prioritizing amplifier, right? Yeah. That's okay. Correct. Very cool. That's yeah. So that's my that's my approach to it. And what also is inside this camera is the uh, Digix 7 processor. What can you tell me about that? Well, the Digix 7 processor was first put into the C500 Mark II. Mm -hmm. And it, it was exciting for us because it's the first in the a kind of a new generation of Digix processors for Cinema EOS. So I think they're still kind of unlocking the capabilities of it. But it really is what allows us to push the frame rates to allow us to do the raw internally to the cards. Dude, what can the camera do thanks to the, the Digix 7? So you mentioned it right there. So we're, we're mm -hmm. internally, uh, the recording capabilities are 4K raw right. light. And, so. and you also have, that's DCI 4K raw right. light. Mm -hmm. You can also do 4K XFAVC, mm -hmm. right? 10 bit XFAVC. Yeah. Um, and you have uh, 2K raw. Mm -hmm. capabilities as well mm -hmm. and not only that but we have high frame rates now yeah, this absolutely. Camera. yes amazing <laughs> thank you so much um so let's talk about that a little bit so what is what is am i reading this correctly 4k raw at 120 frames per second yeah you're absolutely correct there um so the interesting thing about the raw when we're in when we're in cinema raw light mode right um you're recording a 4k dci image. If I want to record 2K raw, it's bumping into the actual pixels of 2K on the sensor. Mm -hmm. And in the camera, we call that super 16 millimeter crop mode. That becomes a 2K DCI as well. And just mm -hmm. to note is that you can't record UHD or full HD in raw. You, okay. it's, raw is only DCI. Got it. If you want your UHD, you go to XFAVC if you need to get that or, right. you know, you transfer to UHD and post, like most people seem to do. 4K raw, you get up to 120 frames a second. Um, 2K raw, bumping into that Super 16 size, we're going to go up to 180 frames a second in raw. 
something we got to talk about too about the raw is that yes when you're shooting in frame rates that are 30 and below you're getting a 12-bit raw when we bump up over 30 frames you're going down to a 10-bit raw All right. okay take a switch now over to what the other product can has to announce right now and that is a brand new lens and i think you have it with you I do. I'm uh, one of the lucky ones to be able to see this guy. Uh, this is the CN 10 by 25 IAS, also known as the Cine Servo 25 to 250. If you're familiar with the, the 17 to 120, I mean, this is only slightly longer uh, than that. This is weighing in at just over 11 inches and only slightly heavier. This is at 6.7 pounds um, versus 6.3 on that other one. Um, so they're very, very similar, which is incredibly impressive for a lens with this kind of range. Mm. You know, that 17 to 120, everybody loves it. It's become like a standard out there uh, in, you know, for, for large sensor coverage uh, and, and servo operation. Uh, everybody just kept asking me, you know, can we get more range? And we, we want more range out of it. So this lens um, answers that need and kind of fits right in between our existing 17 to 120 and our super telephoto 50 to 1000. It is 4K fully ready, right? What sensors can it cover? Of course, it's a it's a Super 35 coverage. Uh, however, uh, it does have a, a little trick to it. Um, there is a 1.5x uh, extender built in. Okay. Um, which, when that's extended, um, it will allow for full frame sensor coverage. Extremely flexible. It's basically yeah. like two lenses in one. Um, you know, obviously with you know the new uh, full frame cinema cameras out on the market, zoom ranges are a little bit limited. Um, so this does a really impressive job with just the flick of a switch. It's kind of two lenses in one. Uh, the normal aperture range on this lens is t two point nine five to three point nine five, exactly the same as the seventeen to one twenty. Uh, however, when you engage that uh, that extender and it covers full frame, it's a T4.4 to 5.9. So it's only a one-stop loss, and you're getting full frame coverage. Um, so again, you know, crossover and, and use with the 17 to 120 and the 50 to 1000 is very, very uh, likely with this. And it's dual purpose, too, because it ships with a, a drive unit there on the yeah. side. I see that. Yeah, so, you so you've got... Focus, yeah, this iris, and uh, zoom, right? All right there? Exactly. You've got three 20-pin uh, Hiroshi connectors. Uh, you can use uh, your regular broadcast focus and zoom demands with it. It's also got a, um, an input output for the uh, uh, encoder, uh, the 16-bit uh, absolute value encoder, for use with virtual systems at sporting events or, um, or anything of the like. Very cool. And that comes off. Right. Yeah, you you can remove the the servo unit, um, and then the lens is just a basically a manual cinema lens at that point. Um, you, you've got uh, geared um, uh, gearing for like a fizz unit. So if you're on a you know full on cinema production, uh, you want to you know hook it up with rods and rig. Obviously rods because we we recommend rods for use with this lens on both the Good EF point. and the PL mount. 11 blade iris, uh, right. you know, in keeping with the, the cinema side of things, provides this really nice, beautiful, soft, out of focus backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, as far as the overall look of the lens, it's, uh, it matches right in with our other cinema uh, lenses. You know, a little bit warmer coating for good skin tones, um, less breathing, and, um, you know, that, that really durable, weatherproof construction. Awesome. And it comes in, I believe, two mounts. There's an EF. And a PL mount, right? That's correct, yes. And, uh, and you can swap that at uh, any uh, service center. Uh, the EF mount uh, supports all of, you know, everything you, you would expect. Dual pixel autofocus, peripheral illumination correction, chromatic aberration correction, all those things. And if you go with the PL mount, you've got Cook Eye technology uh, compatibility in there. Speaking of lens and mounts, let's switch back over to uh, the C300 Mark III. Uh, yeah. I believe that you can also swap <clears throat> lens mounts on the camera body. Is that right? Yeah, you know, we have three different lens mounts for the camera. And it, the camera ships with a standard EF mount, as you would kind of expect. Sure. Um, but then you have an option of buying the EF locking mount, um, also called the EF cinema mount. And basically, it's an EF mount that adds some PL mount functionality. It just makes things more rigid, uh, kind of gets rid of that, that flex that you might find when you're really working your EF mount. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, the PL mount, I think that's the one that everybody really wants is going for. And I mean, we all know what's going on there. 
with a PL yeah. now it's just all the types yeah. of lenses that you can use with it. Yeah. And the great thing is, is that these are the exact same mounts that the C500 Mark II uses. So say you have a C500 Mark II and you have those mounts, you don't need to buy any of these extra accessories. Oh, you can share cool. them between the camera. Yeah, and the same pretty... goes for the expansion modules too, is that right? Yeah, same goes for the expansion modules. Pretty much everything, the body is exactly the same as the C500 Mark II's body. If you have third-party accessories for the C500 Mark II, they're going to work exactly the same on your C300 Mark III. Fantastic. In that same sense, do you have uh, uh, electronic image stabilization in the C300 Mark III? We and do. you have all the dual-pixel autofocus functionality as well, right? Absolutely. And But one thing I want to yeah, pop in with definitely the image, you know, facial tracking, uh, object tracking when you find it in the menu. But on this one, um, what you can't do on the C500 that you can do on here is that you can actually sh do dual pixel autofocus at 120 frames a second. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Oh, and actually, okay. there's it's a number of speeds. So you can do 24, 30, 48, 60, and 120 in dual pixel autofocus. Wow. So, that's huge. Okay, that's, that's something, something we've never helpful. been able Yeah, we've never been able to do that before in our cinema EOS cameras. So. Right. Okay. Very cool. Are there shooting modes you have to put that camera in, or is there a slow, fast mode like the C500 Mark II where you can quickly change? Yeah, slow and fast mode, exactly the same. Okay. And just like the C500, the buttons are on the side now, so you no need to go into the menu to go into any of that stuff. Yeah, bam, that's bam, so convenient. Ro rotate the dial to the frame rate you want, and Fantastic. you're good to go. What was Canon hearing from their users, and how did Canon respond with this camera? This has been more the culmination of from feedback from the original C300 and on, mm. and just just the the whole Cinema EOS product line in general, I really see the the C500 Mark II and the C300 as this symbiotic unit in a way. And I, I think that was that was something from feedback that people give us. They want more interchangeability between the cameras. When you're deciding a camera, you're 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 deciding upon purely on what you need for the production in terms of frame rates or dynamic range, right? You're yep. not deciding that, oh, I have this rig, so I should have to buy this camera because my rig works with it. We wanted to try to go for more ubiquitous in terms of the third-party rigs, in terms of all of the other minutia, but have it come down purely to the image. The the one criticism of the 17 to 120 that we got was you know not enough range. Uh, they wished it had a built-in extender. They just wanted more zoom out of it. Um, and I think you know obviously this lens addresses that uh, concern. Well, I'll thank you guys both for for joining me here in my bedroom. Very exciting new <laughs> products from Canon C300 Mark III and the 25 to 250 Cine Zoom. Uh, thanks, guys. You know, stay safe, stay healthy during these strange times. And as Jake with B&H, just keep rolling.